<laughs> They're not even in the same league. Which one of these three hummus do you think is the smoothest? A, B, or C? If you chose B, you'd be correct. Not only is it the smoothest hummus here, but it's also the one I just made. In comparison to store-bought hummus, it's more flavorful and fresher, and getting it extra smooth is perfectly achievable at home. Here's why. By definition, hummus is chickpeas which have been blended with tahini, salt, and lemon till they form a homogenous emulsion. That emulsion is what I like to call base hummus, and you can make any variety of hummus to perfection if you nail the base hummus. If you've made homemade hummus before, you'll know it tastes amazing, but getting the same texture as mass-produced hummus is really difficult. Of the four ingredients in hummus, only the chickpeas and tahini provide solid texture, so those are the two elements you need to understand to get smooth hummus. If you have a Vitamix or an industrial food processor, you probably don't need to worry about these, but in a home kitchen, these are going to hold back your hummus. Unless, that is, you follow these steps. Now, tahini is interesting because it's technically an emulsion of sesame pulp and sesame oil. When you add water to tahini, it seizes up and turns lumpy. Then if you keep adding water, it thins out again into a liquid. So as you add tahini to hummus, it will get thicker and lumpier before it thins out. That means there's a sweet spot with every hummus where you've added enough water to properly emulsify the tahini and make the hummus smooth, but not too much to make your hummus runny. So if the tahini can be tackled, it leaves the chickpeas as the main source of texture in hummus, and it's here that almost every recipe falls short. Chickpeas are made up of two layers, a fibrous skin and an internal core. That chickpea skin doesn't blend well, and it's the reason most hummus has a coarse texture. So the solution is to remove the skin or break it down completely. Now even if you try to remove most of the skin manually, it's a time-consuming task, and it's practically impossible to skin every chickpea. Aside from the skin, you also need to have a soft and creamy core to your chickpeas. Canned chickpeas are cooked to a chewable consistency, so you'd need to cook these further to get a creamy texture, which works well for the hummus. I like to cook my chickpeas with some bicarbonate of soda, and I'll let them cook until they turn into mush. There's no downside to overcooking the chickpeas, and it's actually how most restaurants in the Middle East make extra smooth hummus. That bicarb will break down the cellulose and the skin of the chickpeas, and at the end of cooking you'll have skinless chickpeas without doing any of the peeling. Armed with those two bits of knowledge, here's how I make my smooth hummus. First, I always start with dried chickpeas, because I find canned chickpeas have a strange smell and the dried ones always taste better. Measure up 500 grams into a large bowl, then pour over a ton of water to completely submerge them. I do this the night before making hummus, and the next morning they'll have doubled in size and weight like this. Drain and rinse those chickpeas, then add them to a pot with one teaspoon of baking soda. Now pour in enough water to submerge those chickpeas by about 2 inches and turn the heat up to high. Don't go anywhere because those chickpeas will get foamy, and when they do, stir the foam back into the pot and turn the heat to medium. Half an hour later your chickpeas are technically cooked, they have a soft and creamy inside while still holding themselves together. Set aside a big scoop of those cooked chickpeas so you can use them later as a garnish. If you want to use canned chickpeas, add them to the pot with the baking soda and skip ahead to this stage. Now place a lid on your pot and let this cook for another 30 to 60 minutes. When your chickpeas reach this broken goopy stage, they're technically ready, but you should let any excess water evaporate so that you don't add extra liquid to the hummus. This texture is key to getting your hummus extra smooth, and now you should spread it out on a plate and let it cool down completely before processing. Once cooled, you'll take the cooked chickpeas and add them to a food processor or blender. Process these for about 3-4 to four minutes, scraping down the sides of the bowl halfway through, and you're done processing when your chickpeas have turned into a fine paste like this. Although it looks lumpy, as I spread it you can see it isn't leaving any chunks behind, and the residue has a fine floury texture. You can now turn this into hummus with the guarantee that you won't have any chunks of chickpea that ruin the texture. To dilute the paste we need to add some water, but using ice will produce a better result as it will give the hummus a creamier texture and lighter colour. So add 70 grams of ice and process that into the hummus until it goes from tan to a light beige colour. Here you can see the before and after, and it's clear how creamy the ice made the hummus. Now pour in 250 grams of tahini and make sure you do this after blending the ice or your hummus can get too warm and develop a lumpy texture. The hummus will now get quite thick, so we'll add 75 milliliters of lemon juice to thin it out again, and we'll also add 2 teaspoons of salt for seasoning. Blend this together and then you'll be left with a wonderful thick hummus like this. Taste it and if you feel it needs more acid, try using some citric acid instead of lemon juice so you don't thin it out too much. You may also feel the hummus is a little too thick, and in that case you can add another 30 grams of ice to get it to a creamier consistency. 
So there you have it, a smooth hummus base which can easily be spread, and it will hold its shape quite well. You can now throw in some spices or minced garlic if you want to flavour this, but we usually don't add anything else in the Middle East. Of course I had to put this hummus to the test, so I went out to Waitrose which is a premium supermarket in the UK, and I got some of their regular hummus and some of their smooth hummus. You can probably spot that there's quite a difference in the texture of these, with one being weirdly coarse, which is another reason why homemade hummus is better. To serve this, add a few spoonfuls of hummus to a plate or bowl, then while rotating the plate, build the hummus into a pile using the inside of the spoon. Now using the back of the spoon, press down into the centre of the pile, then keep rotating the plate to push the hummus outwards into this classic shape. You can now add a bunch of chickpeas to the middle of the plate, then pour some fantastic olive oil into the centre. Another way we commonly serve hummus is with some paprika. Wet the back of a fork, then dip it into some paprika before pressing into the hummus for those classic paprika stripes. This next one is my favourite kind of hummus, hummus bishawarma, which is basically just regular hummus with a small serving of chicken shawarma in the centre. If you're having guests over, consider buying some shawarma from a takeaway and serving this for an easy twist. Finally, I wanted to show you Beiruti hummus, which is a tangy, herby and spicy hummus from Lebanon. Add a cup of hummus to a bowl with 2 tablespoons of chopped parsley, 1 teaspoon of chopped mint, 1 clove of minced garlic and 2 tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Add half a teaspoon of chilli flakes, then mix this all together into a fantastic and spicy hummus. Once you've tackled base hummus, you gain the ability to customise and serve many different kinds of hummus from the same base. There's infinite ways you can jazz up hummus and they're all deliciously unique. So tell me what cool combinations have you invented? Mm. Now that is what I call good hummus. It's creamy, smooth, flavourful, and it hasn't got that packaged flavour which really puts me off store-bought hummus. Now click here to see more of my favourite Middle Eastern dips.